Have you ever got a fit of the giggles at a really inappropriate time? Or maybe you've been with a friend or family member and you find yourself smiling and nodding, but behind that mask, you're just biting your tongue to hold back all those anger and humili or anger that you're just dying to respond with. So these are examples of emotion regulation, other examples of which are very common in our everyday social interactions. And they're guided by these innate display rules, which tell us what emotions are okay to display, in what situations, and to what intensity. Now imagine instead of that friend or family member, you're standing in front of a room of, say, 25 to 30 teenagers, some who don't want to do what you're telling them, the majority of whom don't want to be there in the first place. Now imagine that you need to do this between nine and four, five days a week. So for any of you that may have guessed, I'm talking about post-primary school teachers. Now, according to the previous literature and research, teaching has been acknowledged as requiring multiple identities or hats. Now, these fall primarily into three roles, the educator, the carer, and the disciplinarian. Now, each one of these identities has different aligning emotional displays. We have the educator, who's expected to display enthusiasm to motivate students to learn. Then we have the disciplinarian, who displays emotions of power, such as anger and disapproval, in order to maintain control of the classroom. Then being a caring profession, they're also expected to portray caring, such as concern, to these students who, at the end of the day, are just children. Now, despite the acknowledgement of these characteristics of teaching as being emotional in nature and multifaceted, there's still quite a large gap in the research in relation to this overarching identity of emotional chameleon, which appears to be required by teachers in order to perform their work duties. So this leads us to a lot of interesting and unanswered questions. First and foremost, in relation to these hats, are all hats created equal? Is the educator role and the subsequent emotional displays as important, more important, or less important to those of the caring role or disciplinarian role? So these are the questions that my research is attempting to answer, along with issues such as the school culture. So for example, if the school is one that promotes high grades and performativity, what does this mean for the caring teacher who wants to display concern to that, sorry, who wants to display concern to that student who's acting out in class or falling behind? Through semi-structured interviews and diary studies, I will be exploring these issues with post-primary school teachers currently practicing in Ireland in order to not just build this gap in the literature, but also to learn more about these emotional skills required to educate our children. Thank you.